Hey there, I'm Sal. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're going to be doing a bit of an audio upgrade in my truck. So nothing crazy, but I want to do some new speakers. I have an underseat subwoofer to install. And then I also bought some sound deadening to put on all the doors to try and insulate the cab a little bit better. So uh, hopefully it makes a big difference. I guess we'll find out soon enough. So let's get into it. Okay, so first order business is gonna be getting off the door panel and there's three Phillips head screws holding it in over here. And then when you pop off these covers here, there's two T30 Torx bits. Next up we gotta take off this door handle trim and I actually have a whole video dedicated to how to take this off without breaking it and uh, I'll have that link down below. But basically you just gotta jam something in here to kind of pop it up and off of this little tab so that it doesn't break. And, uh, and it just slides right out. Okay, so once all the bolts are out, we can start prying around with one of these body panel pullers. Um, you can get these super cheap anywhere, Amazon, uh, Harbor Freight, wherever. Once you feel it really loose like this, you can actually just kind of lift up. And it'll disconnect from the door. Okay, so behind the door panel, there's a bunch of wiring that's still attached. So there's four main connectors. And then after you just connect the last connector, you can just pull the door panel off and we can get going on this. Okay, so the first thing I wanna upgrade are the speakers. And I gotta preface this by saying, I'm not an audiophile by any means. I don't really know any of the specs or, or all that stuff. I just knew I wanted to upgrade it a little bit and uh, replace these 20 year old speakers that are in here. So uh, I went with a kicker set up. Um, I honestly just went on Crutchfield and looked for upgrades that fit within my, my price range. So um, yeah, I'll have these linked below. Hopefully they sound good. I, <laughs> I don't know. I watched a few videos that had pretty good reviews. So um, yeah, we'll give it a shot. So it should be a pretty easy install. There's just four Phillips screws that hold in the old speaker. And then that's how this one will be secured as well. Biggest thing is the wiring. Uh, Kicker does provide some splice connectors to connect into the factory wiring, but uh, I, I just prefer to solder my connections. So that's, that's what I'll be doing. One mistake that I made on the driver's side was uh, I actually cut the wiring here and planned to splice in the new speaker wire that Kicker provides here. But <laughs> then I realized it goes through this connector and then there's more on this side. So if you did it here, you have to feed it across and it just wouldn't work. So wait till you unscrew this old one and then cut it inside. On the Kicker wiring, both wires are gray, but the wire with the black stripe will be the ground. So I'll match that up with the black and then the other one with the red. <laughs> Don't forget to put your shrink wrap before you solder things. I've forgotten so many times and it's so annoying. <laughs> so yeah, make sure it's on there before you actually lay the solder down. Now it just goes uh, red to red and black to black down here. The speaker's all hooked up. So you can see that the screws don't really line up with the slots super well. They're kind of hanging off the end, but I mean, I can move the whole door with this thing. So I'm not really worried about them falling off. Okay, so if we were doing just a simple speaker upgrade, we could throw the door panel back on and we'd be good to go. But like I mentioned earlier, I want to do some sound deadening on the truck because every post that I see, all the videos I've watched, everyone's like, if you're doing a speaker upgrade, you've got to do sound deadening. Um, it just makes a huge difference. It makes the, the speaker sound better. And it also, you know, just makes the truck feel a little more solid when you close the doors, stuff like that. So um, I got to see what all the hype's about, right? <laughs> so I went on Amazon and got this um, Silas sound deadening material. Uh, I thought it was a, you know, pretty decent value. Sound deadening is kind of expensive. Um, and so I found this stuff, had good reviews, and I figured I'd, I'd give it a shot. So, um, what I want to do is actually put it on the skin of the door, not here, but on the back side of this. So let's get the vapor barrier off. Uh, it's just a couple 10 millimeter bolts, and then it just peels right off. So 
So now that we got that off, we can see just how much access we've got to reach all back in here and put some uh, sound deadening on all this skin. So just a little before and after. As far as installing, uh, I just went through and cleaned the whole inside here with some isopropyl alcohol and then you could also use a degreaser or whatever. And then just make sure that there's no dirt or dust. And then you could put some cardboard back there, make a template, but I'm just planning to kind of hold it up, eyeball it. One more test fit and my hole lines up. Everything looks good to go. So as far as what this stuff actually is, it's um, it's got this like aluminum cover on it, but then the back of it is like this sticky rubber substance, I guess. And this is obviously what's going to absorb all that, the noise and the vibrations. So yeah, this is what sticks. There's no prep, it's just make sure it's clean and then this sticks right on. Um, they encourage you to use a roller to get all like the dimples out, but I don't really have one. I've just been kind of like trying to push on it really hard with my hand. Okay, so this is what that first piece looks like. Um, I just made this cut. Goes down a little bit before it starts to curve and then it goes all the way to the end of the door down there. So um, yeah, this is one of my better ones. The hole's lined up. It goes right to the end. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with it. It's honestly just a really, really long, tedious process. Because <laughs> um, you, so you gotta imagine I'm gonna do another one over here and then there and there. And then up top above that bar, there and there. So it's, uh, it, it's a long one, but I, I think it'll be worth it. I'll, uh, I'll time lapse through most of this. Okay, so I got the whole skin done and it looks really good in here. Got all that done, all down here. You can kind of see it peeking through here and then over here. Here's the taps from after. Okay, so I think I'm gonna actually leave it here with the sound deadening. On the driver's side, I did like a little strip here, a little strip down here, a little strip down here, and I mean, I don't know. Tell me in the comments if you think that'd be worth it, but I personally feel like doing the whole skin on the inside is enough. Um, I don't know if having all these extra little pieces all over the place are gonna make a big enough difference. So um, I'm gonna throw the door panel back on, but Heck, let me know in the comments if you guys, enough of you say that yes, it's worth it to put pieces all over the place. I'm definitely gonna pull the panel back off and do that. Um, but for now, we'll, we'll get it back on and we'll move on to the subwoofer next. I know it sounds silly to say, but don't forget to put the vapor barrier back on. Um, I did the driver's side yesterday, got the door panel back on, everything set, and then I looked back and I was like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> so um, just make sure you get this on before you do the, the door panel. Okay, so after finishing the front doors, I actually also installed the same speakers on the rear doors. And um, yeah, I, there was a little bit of room for sound deadening, so I kind of put it where I could, but obviously it's not as big of a surface area as the front doors. Um, <laughs> I tried to record it for you guys, but the first one, uh, I accidentally put it in slow-mo mode. So I have a nice 40 minute long slow-mo video of me installing sound deadening on the back door. And then the second one, it just didn't record. I don't know what happened. so. Um, you have to take my word for it. I did do sound deadening and a new speaker on the rear doors. 
Okay, but now on to the fun stuff. So I picked up this Rockville RW10CA subwoofer. Um, it's self-powered 10 inch subwoofer and it actually fits under the seat. So uh, I played around with it a little bit and I didn't think it was actually gonna fit because it kept hitting the top of the seat like it's a little bit too thick. Um, but I kept trying to put it too far back. <laughs> um, and I found that actually at the further forward you put it, the more clearance you get. So if you jam this thing all the way forward and kind of put it sideways in there, it actually fits under our seats. Okay, and I want to reiterate, <laughs> I'm not an audiophile. I'm not going for a uh, big bass here, knocking the socks off of the dude, you know, five cars down. But I just want to kind of pick up the slack where the little speakers are missing out um, on the low end of things. So um, that's why I went with this smaller speaker that just fits under the seat. Um, I think it'll do exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so the first thing I want to run is the positive power. Uh, it's just running from the engine bay. I want to get it out of the way. So uh, I bought this inline fuse holder on Amazon, and I threw a 40 amp fuse in there. Uh, I just figured it would be enough where it won't get triggered by normal operation, but small enough that it, um, it'll trip if something actually bad happens. Okay, so I got the wire passed through the grommet down there. Um, you can see it comes out of the battery, runs down along here. And then in there honestly it was a huge pain in the butt to get it in there i tried passing it through the same hole as the big bundle of wires but it's it's like one of those you can't push a rope you know so it's really hard to press this wire through so i ended up just cutting a hole with an exacto knife off to the left and then passing it through there okay so you can see the wire coming through the grommet there runs back under the carpet and then pops up right there under the seat Runs down along the seat and then plugs into the subwoofer there. I was hoping to have it come like out to here-ish, but I cut it a little short and it only goes to here. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's whatever. I was able to connect it. Then I did the ground wire. Again, you can see it coming out right there. And I just have it run to this uh, seat bolt there. I'll throw the cover on it and you won't even know it's there. Okay, so next we got to run the trigger wire as well as the actual audio cable from this, the head unit to the subwoofer. Um, we got to take off all this so we can get to the back of it. I've already done it a couple times in my videos, so we'll just time lapse through it. Okay, so back here is pretty straightforward. The cable run into the sub will plug into the subwoofer output, and then um, hopefully your wires are as labeled as nicely as mine are from this Atoto unit. But this red wire here is labeled um, accessory ignition power, so that's what we'll tap into as the trigger wire for the sub. Okay, cool. So I got the wires run. I basically just ran them exactly like I did with the backup camera. If you watch that video, they just come down under the carpet, come down along here, and then they pop up same spot that the power wire did. And then they'll run back and I'll connect them here to the subwoofer. Okay, we got all the wires run and it's looking good to go. So we got the power, the signal, and the ground in there. Then the big guy is the subwoofer in. And then to the left of that, this square one, is the sub remote controller, which is this guy. Uh, it comes with the kit, and you can just turn it up or down. Now, unfortunately, in my haste to get this done, because, you know, the sun, sun's starting to set and stuff, I forgot to run it under the carpet. But honestly, I don't know where I want to put it yet. I'm kind of thinking just on here, so it's replaceable. Um, <laughs> you could just get a new one if, you know, I take the sub out or whatever. So thinking it screwed into there, but also I don't have screws to mount it. Um, I'm not home right now, and uh, I think I left the screws from the kit at home. So I'm thinking I'll end up putting it here, just kind of out of the way. And then out here on the outside, I'm actually really happy. The seat slides forward and back, no problem, no rubbing. Um, let's see, I'll show you what we're working with in here. That's what it looks like with the seat all the way forward. And then if I put the seat all the way back, how it will always be. You can't even tell it's there. So pretty, pretty sweet gig. Okay, quick update. Instead of just leaving the subwoofer control right here, I actually ran it under the seat and I just have it poking out right there. So hopefully, I didn't want to do this because I knew it would be a higher chance of me just leaving it there. <laughs> but um, hopefully I end up still routing it and putting it, you know, either down here or over here somewhere. I don't really know yet. Okay, so I've been driving with this stuff for about a week now, and I wanted to give you guys a quick initial review on it all. So 
the subwoofer first. It's the biggest thing that I can feel um, of all the things that I did. And I'm still really liking it. Something I realized I didn't mention in the when I was recording this all last week was why I put it under my front seat instead of picking to do it under the rear seats, which a lot of people do. And for me, I actually keep some stuff in those back seats, so I don't want to give up that space. Whereas with the front seat, I'm not using it under here for anything, so um, I just felt like that fit me a little bit better. Uh, next, the speakers. Again, I'm not huge into like audio, so I can't really delineate like if it's they're that much better than the old ones, but uh, I do think that they sound pretty crisp, especially at the, like, the louder volumes, um, so I'm happy with them. I don't know that I would do the ones in the back seat because I don't think they made a big enough difference. I would just stick with upgrading the front seat ones. And then as far as the sound deadening, I don't know how big of a difference it really made. Um, you know, people talked it up a lot and I just don't hear enough of a difference to kind of warrant all the work that went into it because it did take a lot of time and the sound deadening is very expensive. I'd say that driving on the highway, uh, I used to listen to music at volume 35, but now I can listen to it around 31, 32 and it sounds the same. So maybe that's the sound ending I'm not super sure there's a lot of other noises going on in my truck with I got an aftermarket exhaust I got big all-terrain tires and then there's also just a lot of wind noise so my dad made the analogy it's funny I was talking with him and it's like having all the windows open in your house and it's really cold outside and you're like man it's cold in here I'm gonna close one of the windows <laughs> so you close one of the windows and it's like man it's still really cold in here and so that's kind of what putting sound editing on just the front doors does it's like helping the situation, but it's not a solution. Um, so I think if I put more under the seats or behind the back seats, which is something I do want to do, it'll help a lot. Other than that, um, I'm really happy with it all. I'll have it all linked in the description, so uh, go check it out. But thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and have a great rest of your day.